All right, everybody, it's time for us to begin our study this morning. We're going to be doing something different than uh, usual, which I'm excited about, and we're going to be doing something different than what's in your syllabus. You can pretty much just throw away your syllabus because it's got some mistakes on it. Um, our gospel meeting is uh, not on there, and the rest of this quarter is going to be different than what's on your syllabus. I decided that earlier this week because the syllabus has us spending these last three classes on Zechariah, just really going deep and studying these last four chapters of Zechariah, and it's, it's really good stuff because there's a lot of prophecies about Jesus there. But I just thought, you know, it just feels a, a little bit like it's going backwards for us to go back into a, a kind of a somewhat detailed study of the book of Zechariah. We've already finished the Old Testament. We have now finished the years of silence, and we're getting ready to enter the New Testament. So I thought it would be really fitting for us to do one of my favorite things. Um, it's a little self-serving for me to want this, I, I admit. But it would be really fitting for us having, ha having hit this milestone. And it, I mean, we've been studying the Old Testament for three years. You guys realize that? We wrapped up, we studied the whole Old Testament in three years, now, and also the years of silence. We've hit this big milestone. I just thought it would be very appropriate for us to just back up and look at the, the layout of the Bible and the 17 Bible periods and make sure we're all crystal clear in our understanding of those 17 periods. Some of you know those. Some of you have heard us review them, but you don't really necessarily understand all of them. And, uh, and so what I want us to do is spend today and Wednesday talking about the 17 Bible periods. My goal for today is just to make sure we understand them. We're not really going to be focused on trying to memorize them. We just want to make sure we're understanding all 17 of them. And on Wednesday, our goal is to learn how they link together, logically how they link. Because a lot of times we may take these 17 Bible periods and just memorize them like cold memory. But it's better if we can understand how they logically link. Then you can say them forwards as well as backwards without practicing, just because you know how they link. You can start at any point in Bible history and know what period comes before that and what period comes after that period. And it's so helpful to know that broad context anywhere you are in the Bible, to know we're in this particular Bible period because that's the first thing you need to know about the context is that very broad context of what Bible period you're in. And then you hone into the more immediate context. But context is everything. So that's that's one of the reasons I think this is so valuable. And it's, it's just a lot of fun to study and fun for me to for, for me to teach on next Sunday. Brian wants to look at um, Messianic prophecies. Uh, as our last class before we actually go into the New Testament. We're going to be in the life of Christ for six months, next, starting next quarter, and we're going to be in the New Testament for two years. So we've been in the Old Testament for three years, and we're soon going to be transitioning to be in the New Testament for, for two years. That's pretty exciting. And so what Brian wants to do on our last class next Sunday um, is he wants to take a look at Messianic prophecies that are at the end of the book of Zechariah, but it's not really a detailed study of, of those chapters. It's just looking at the Messianic prophecies. And so I, I'm excited uh, about that. And then after that, there will be a singing on the following Wednesday and then our gospel meeting the next Sunday. And then after that, we, our, our new quarter starts. We'll be in the life of Christ. So that's kind of the plan from here forward for the rest of this quarter. So... Let's dive in to the 17 Bible periods. What is the first Bible period? The flood. It is before the flood. And by the way, here's our takeaway. The whole Bible is about Jesus. <laughs> Everything. The Old Testament is saying somebody's coming. The New Testament says somebody came and he's coming back. And it's all, it's all about Jesus. He is the crux of the Bible. So we have before the flood. And when you think of, you know, we might be tempted to call this first period creation, but it's more than creation. OK, so, yes, we have, you know, Genesis one and God created the heavens and the earth in six days. And on day seven, he rested. We have all, all of that. But what else do we have in this period of before the flood? 
Not quite yet. Not quite yet. That's coming. Yeah, that's, that's right. What else do we have, obviously, besides creation? The, the fall, you have Adam and Eve, so you have the, the, the first sin, and you also have the first murder, right? Who's that with? Cain. Cain and Abel, and then, you know, Genesis 5, we have generations going from Adam to, uh, to Noah. And I'm just going to throw this in real quick. Um, when, you, when you read generations, you know, so-and-so begat so-and-so begat so-and-so begat so-and-so begat so-and-so, you know, Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalo, Little Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah. When you read all of that, it, uh, it's fast-forwarding. It's like, it's like the Bible hones in on what you need to know, and then it gets to these gen generations, and it goes, all right, zip, 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 we're going to fast-forward now to the next period. And that's what we have in Genesis 5, okay? So that's, that's before the flood. B before we go, however, to the next period, let's turn our Bibles to Genesis 3, okay? Turn your Bibles... Please, to Genesis chapter 3. Uh, in Genesis 3, we're just going to look at one verse, verse 15. This is a, the first messianic prophecy. This is the prophecy given um, by God to the devil, to the serpent. This is um, after, obviously, the, the sin in, in the garden. In Genesis 3 and verse 15, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, he, that is the seed of woman, shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. You probably know, what does the word translated bruise actually mean? You may have a center column reference. It means crush. Okay, so it is being prophesied here that there would be a human being, a male, who would come from Eve who would deal a crushing blow to Satan's head in the imagery of stomping your head on a, on, on a snake's, uh, stomping your head, stomping your heel on a snake's head. So that is a messianic prophecy. That's, that's a prophecy about Jesus, right? And we're just going to point a few of these out as we, go, as we go along here and there. What's the next period after before the flood? All right, good job. The next period is the flood. By the way, one of the reasons we call the first period before the flood Instead of just calling it creation, not only are, are, are there more stories than just creation, but also when we call it before the flood, that should immediately bring to mind what the next period is. So that's one reason we, we call it that. But you can call it whatever you want. You can call it Frank. Uh, but, so here we have the next period, the flood. Now, when we, we have the period of the flood, we need to think of the events that are all grouped right there around the flood. We're not, we're not just thinking about when the rain came down. That, that was the actual flood. Okay, but we're thinking of, for example, when God told Noah, the world is exceedingly wicked, I'm going to destroy it, I want you to build the ark. And so he does for 120 years. It takes him 120 years to build this massive thing. You can go see it in Kentucky. <laughs> uh, no, not really, but you know, they have the ark experience there, and I've heard it's amazing. I want to go see it one day. It's, it's to scale, it's built to scale and everything. Some of y'all seen that. I've heard it's really cool. And then we have the actual flood, so the, the fountains of the great deep bursting forth and, and heavens pouring forth its rain, and, and it rains for 40 days, and, and Noah and his, and his family and, and, and the animals uh, are in the ark for a total of 110 days before the, the water finally recedes and they're able to come out, and all of that. And then the, the things that happen after the flood. What kind of stuff happened after the flood? Okay, yeah. Uh, let's not go that far after, like immediately after. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can, Jason, can you turn these lights off? Yes, sir. Yeah, so you have the, the rainbow covenant, right? In Genesis chapter 9, you know, there's several things in Genesis meat for food, capital punishment, the rainbow covenant, and Noah's drunkenness. So remember, Noah got drunk, and, and he gave the prophecies to his three sons. Who were his three sons? Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? And, of course, Shem is the one who will, who, who will be uh, in a position kind of more blessed than his brothers, Shem. And uh, ultimately, it's from Shem that Jesus is going to come. The, the word Shem is the same word that we get the term Semite from. 
Uh, Semite refers to the Jewish people. So anyway, uh, all that stuff that's grouped right around the flood, that's in this period of the flood. All right? What's the next period? Okay, the scattering of, of the people. And this is where they build a tower, trying to reach uh, high. They're not trying to reach heaven where God dwells, but they are trying to reach the heavens in terms of, like, we're going to build a skyscraper. Why do they want to build a skyscraper? To be united, make a name for themselves. They had one language. They were one nation. This is the whole earth. This is all the people on the planet. God didn't want them to be one nation. He didn't want them having one language. So what did God do? He, that's right. He confused their language so that there were many languages and they could not communicate to, to keep working on these projects that they wanted to do and finish this tower and all of that. And so they split up into groups that spoke these different languages, these root languages, uh, and became many nations. So when you think of the scattering of the people, think of the Tower of Babel. By the way, let me just throw this in. The first period before the flood is the first five chapters of Genesis. The second period, the flood, is the next five chapters of Genesis. Okay? And then the scattering of the people is Genesis chapter 11. It's just one chapter, but it's significant. It's its own little period. We can't fit it. Uh, in in uh, the flood, we can't fit it in the patriarchs. It's his own little significant period. Okay? All right, then we have the next period, which is what? Patriarchs. What does the word patriarch mean? Father, ruler. 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 Ark. So, patri, father, ark, ruler. Patriarch. So, father, ruler. So, there was no revealed scripture yet. So God would speak directly to the heads of households uh, and communities, the heads of these communities. And so specifically, we're thinking of three men in this period. And who are they? Abraham, Abraham then his son Isaac, then his son Jacob. These were the three patriarchs. And there were three promises given uh, to these three men. It was actually one promise is like a threefold promise. But what were the three promises? Land, nation, nation seed. seed. That's how we've normally learned it. Land, nation, seed. And we just need to stop and just go to Genesis 12. Very significant. Genesis 12, where we have the three promises. Genesis 12, 1 plus 2 is three promises. So remember, Genesis 12, 1, 2, where we have the three promises. Okay, uh, Genesis 12 <clears throat> and verse 3 and I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So in Abraham, the entire world would be blessed. How did that happen? Jesus. Obviously that happened through Jesus. Now let's look at another verse real quick. Go to Genesis 22. Genesis 22, this is uh, when Abraham offered his son Isaac. Or was going to offer him. And uh, then God told him to stop. And then God says through, through the angel of the Lord in Genesis 22 and verse 18, He repeats that third promise there. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So that seed is not talking about Abraham's seed in general, but Paul makes clear in Galatians 3, I believe it's Galatians 3.16, that the seed there is referring to whom, obviously? It's referring to one seed, as Paul says, and that is Christ. Okay, so that's actually the verse where we get uh, this verse here in Genesis twenty-two eighteen 18 is the verse where we get that idea of the seed. When we say land, nation, seed, that's where we get it is from Genesis 22, not Genesis 12. Okay. Also, Joseph belongs in this period. He's sold into Egypt. His family moves to Egypt, which sets up the next period. But... What is the next period? The Exodus. Now, oh, my font. I should have checked. <laughs> Y'all, it looks so cool on my computer, and then um, Eric messed it up back there. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, whoever's back there, it's your fault. It's not my fault. So the, when you think of the period of the Exodus, don't just think of the book of Exodus. 
Right? At this point, we, we've wrapped up the book of Genesis. So you have before the flood, Genesis 1 through 5. The flood is Genesis 6 through 10. Scattering of the people is Genesis chapter 11. Patriarchs is Genesis 12 through 50. That's an outline of the book of Genesis. Then we have the period of the Exodus. It's more than the book of Exodus. It's the book of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers 1 through 13. That's the period of the Exodus. When you think of the Exodus, think of forward progress. The word Exodus reminds us of what word? Exit. To exit. So we think of exiting Egypt. Okay, but it's more than just exiting. It's a going forward. They came out of Egypt to go where? Go to the promised land. That's the whole reason they came out. And so once that progress stopped, the period of the Exodus was over. But so we have the ten plagues. We have the parting of the Red Sea. Uh, we have, you know, the giving of the law of Moses at Mount Sinai, the building of the tabernacle, the consecrating of the priests. And we have the journeying from Sinai to the edge of the promised land at Kadesh Barnea with the 12 spies and all the things that happened there. I'm intentionally not really talking about the transitions because we're going to focus on that on Wednesday. So I want to make sure I still have some things left over to talk about on Wednesday. So I'm intentionally not really talking about the transitions. But that, that ends the forward progress, Kadesh Barnea, right? That's Numbers 13. So that's why we say Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers 1 through 13, right there. That's the period of the Exodus, okay? Then um, we have the next period. What's the next period? All right. The wandering in the wilderness. And so basically God was saying, listen, you guys didn't trust in me. You're going to live out here in the wilderness for 40 years until you all die. That's the idea. What about our children? Well, your children will be fine. They'll, they'll be the ones that enter the land. So that's, that, that was the plan. And we have some pretty incredible stories. What kind of stories happened during the wandering in the wilderness? Can you think of any? Water from the rock. That's the first one I got here, Jack. You must have saw my notes. Uh, yeah, and that, there were two occasions of that, actually. One where God told him to strike the rock, and one where God told him to speak to the rock, and he struck it anyway. Good. What, what else? All right. Number 16, Korodathan and Abiram. And their rebellion. Is that what you're referring to, Jason? The ground opening up? Good. Uh, the serpent, that's the next one I had. Uh, the bronze serpent. The people were journeying around Moab and whining and complaining, and God sent serpents to bite them. And, and Moses erected this bronze serpent so they could look at it. Uh, and that was all to, to foreshadow Jesus being lifted up on the cross. So it just almost gives me chills when you see Jesus all through the Bible. It's cool, isn't it? It's Jeff. Manna, yes. Uh, that's how they were sustained out here. And, of course, they started whining about that. And uh, they wanted meat, and God sent the quail, and all, all those stories. Good. Any other stories that you want to mention? Man? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, where is that? I, I just have to go back and look at that. But that. That's good. I'm glad you brought that up. And here's one more I would mention, Numbers 22 through 24, where you have Balaam and his donkey. And I don't have time to go into all that, but so many, so many stories here. But this is a pretty dark period for, for God's people, but it leads to a very bright period because what comes next after the wandering in the wilderness? All right, the invasion and conquest. So things get back on track to what God was originally planning. And now they get to go in, they get to take this land flowing with milk and honey. Who's the leader at this, time, at this point? Joshua. Joshua. So Moses dies uh, at the very end of the book of Deuteronomy. All right, so when you've, when you've got the period of the wandering in the wilderness, it's Numbers 14 through 36. Uh, it's it's number, Numbers 14 through 36. It's all of the book of Deuteronomy, and it's Joshua 1 through 5. You don't have to remember that. But what I'm saying is, this study goes really deep. I've, I've, I've put together an entire uh, workbook to take you through an entire quarter's worth of studying to not only learn these periods, but to learn their contents and then to learn where they all belong in Scripture. And that really helps you. But we don't have time to do that right now, obviously. But it's, it's something I geek out on. It's cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. So who took over as leader after Moses died? You already said it. It was Joshua. 
They go in, they possess the land. By this point, how many of the Abrahamic promise, promises were fulfilled? What two? The land and the nation. They had already become a nation uh, by the time they were at Sinai. By the time they came out of Egypt, uh, they weren't just a nation, but by the time they were at Sinai, they were God's nation. I think that's really the, the, the core of the idea. And, um, and the land promise was fulfilled under Joshua, right? And, uh, but that third promise was not fulfilled yet, right? So what kind of stories do we have in the invasion and conquest? All right, the walls came tumbling down. That was the first city that they, you know, they destroyed by marching around, and the, the walls came down. There's archaeological proof of all of this. Pretty incredible. Yes, uh, Joshua commanding the sun to stand still, and it does for about a day uh, in their battles in the, in the southern part of the land. Good. So a lot of really, you know, read the article today. I, I, I wrote about masculinity. These are some masculine stories. You know, little boys, they, they love this stuff, the battling and all that kind of stuff. It's really, really good stuff. What's the next period after the invasion and conquest? The judges. So things went south. They didn't have um, Joshua anymore. They sinned. So God punished them with the people who were still left in the land. They were supposed to keep conquering these people, but they didn't. So they would get oppressed by them, and God would deliver them with... Um, with judges. What does the word judge mean in this context? Deliverer, Deliverer right? So not a guy, you know, in, in like a robe with a gavel in his hand, like we think of judge. It just means deliverer. So, I mean, terrific stories, right? What are some of the stories that come to your mind when you think of the judges? Samson. Samson. He, he killed a lion with his bare hands. He pushed down the... the Pillars of the temple of Dagon, killing more in his death than he did in his life of God's enemies. Deborah, yeah, Deborah, yeah the only woman judge. Yeah, right up here, Gideon and his army of 300 that defeated an innumerable multitude of Midianites. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, yeah, you got Ehud who killed uh, the king of Moab, Eglon, with his sword, and his sword got stuck in his belly and his fat closed over and he couldn't pull it out. So, uh, some... Uh, some, some really crazy stories there, but a very dark time. About 350 years. So after this period of the, uh, of the judges, what came next? The United Kingdom. And that doesn't mean Great Britain. Uh, we could say United Monarchy. Who are the three kings of the United Kingdom? Saul, David, and Solomon. Saul was foolish. David was a man after God's own heart. Solomon started out very wise, turned away from God because of his wives, and turned to idolatry. It was because of his idolatry that we have idolatry for the next more than 200 years. And um, by the way, I want us to focus on another passage here. Let's go to 2 Samuel 7. This is one of those keystone passages that would be among the, the top ten, I would say, you need to know. 2 Samuel 7. David wanted to build God a temple. What did God say? Yeah. No. That's right. You're a man of war. In other words, that there's no peace in the land right now. This is not the right time to, to do that, to build me a temple. And, uh, but in verse 12... 2 Samuel 7, beginning in verse 12, uh, this was through Nathan the prophet. He said, uh, God speaking through him said, When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendant after you who will come forth from you, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now, of course, Solomon partly fulfilled this, but Solomon could not totally fulfill this because Solomon did not live forever. You go down to verse 16. Your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. Well, his earthly throne wasn't established forever, but Jesus is the fulfillment of this passage ultimately. And I'll kind of go back to that later. So, United Kingdom. 
What's the next period after the United Kingdom? And by the way, once we get here, it gets really confusing in, in Scripture to, go, to know exactly where this is. I mean, I could tell you, but you wouldn't remember because uh, you've got two narratives and, and it's really hard to keep up with. What's the next period? The divided kingdom. So the kingdom splits north and south. The northern kingdom is Israel. The southern kingdom is Judah. Judah. Which one was more wicked? Israel. Israel. Judah was more righteous. Judah had some good kings. How many good kings did Israel have? Zero. Zero zip zilch. Now, some of them had some good in them, but there was no that king that could really be defined all in all as a good king up in the northern kingdom of Israel. Any good king was down south. Um, you've heard me give this illustration before. Um, I have an aunt who is from the north, but she lives in Alabama. I used to go visit her, you know, uh, play with my cousins and stuff like that when I was a kid. She would sometimes give us sweet tea, but her being from the north, this sweet tea did not taste sweet at all to me. The sweet tea I was used to was the syrup tea that my mom, I mean, it was like syrup. It was so thick and, and very sweet that I grew up with. And uh, so if there's any good sweet tea here in the States, it's down south. And so that's how I've always helped people to try to remember if there were any good kings, they were down south in Judah. Just like here, there's, if any good sweet tea is down south. So uh, because the northern kingdom was more wicked, and by the way, what kind of stories do we have here in the divided kingdom? Y'all? Lots of war stories. Okay, lots of war stories. What kings might come to your mind as prominent in this period? I said... I, did, I heard a whole bunch of answers. I didn't catch any of them. Ahab, Ahab comes to mind. He married Jezebel, and, and Baal worship was instituted, right? Do we have some good kings down south in this period? Do we have Uzziah? Who else? Okay, later is Hezekiah. So, yeah, so there's some good kings in this time. Hezekiah is the last king during this particular period, and he spans the divided kingdom and Judah alone. And so that leads us to the next period. So let's just go straight there. Judah alone. So the northern kingdom is taken by what world empire? Assyria. Assyria. All right. And we've got Judah left alone in the land for about 135 years longer. Uh, what stories might come to your mind from this period? And the northern prophet was not prophesying. He lied to the young prophet. Okay. He ended up in his death. That that actually belonged at the beginning of the divided kingdom. That's what I thought we were. Oh yeah, we've moved we've moved to Judah alone now. But yeah, that's a good one. That was right at the beginning with Jeroboam. That that's a good one, Jack. So in this period of Judah alone, what what stories might come to mind? Any? Josiah. Josiah. He belongs in this period. And Hezekiah, you know, reinstituting, I mean, uh, uh, kind of, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Bringing the land back to God? Rest, rest, restoring the land? That's, that's one of those long words. It's hard for me to say. Restore. Taking down the worship place of the Baal. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, and also Manasseh, remember? Hezekiah's horrible son, Manasseh, who was, who was just... Utterly wicked, and then he later repented, and uh, what an amazing story. So, yeah, all right. After Judah alone, what's the next period after that? All right, we have the captivity. Um, what prophets come to your mind in this period of captivity? Daniel and Ezekiel. And Jeremiah, he was already doing his prophetic work in the previous period uh, of of Judah alone, but he continued doing his prophetic work. So you've got Jeremiah. God has his bases covered. He's got Jeremiah that's in, you know, uh, Palestine. And then you've got Daniel who was taken and he was uh, in the court, in the king's court. And then what's the other prophet? Ezekiel, who's with the common people. So God had his bases covered. How long did the captivity last? Seventy years. That was prophesied in uh, Jeremiah 25. Um, and so 
It didn't last forever. By the way, what kingdom took the southern kingdom of Judah, what world empire took them cap captive? Babylon. Babylon. All right, so Israel was taken by Assyria. Judah was taken by Babylon, A, B, in that order. Okay, Assyria, then Babylon. Seventy years of Babylonian captivity, and then God allows the people to return once what world empire has taken power? Persia. And what king was it that issued the decree? Cyrus, king of Persia. Uh, the first four verses of, of Ezra chapter 1. And so they, uh, they return, and we have the return from captivity. What's the first priority? We don't have to go into detail here because we've been studying this. Uh, what was the first priority when they returned to the land? Rebuild the temple. And so it takes them a little bit, but they do uh, uh, under Zerubbabel and uh, Jeshua, the high priest. And then Ezra comes, teaches the people. And then under Nehemiah, what happens? The walls are, are rebuilt. Uh, but ultimately, the people, they don't live up to God's plan. They fail to reverence Him. And so what period do we have next? Years of silence. And we've been studying this. You probably know more about the years of silence now than you ever wish you, you, you did. Uh, but Brian and I had to cover it. We, we had to teach it. It's so important to know these things. Uh, so you have you know, Persia, after about 100 years, into those 400 years of silence, falling to what empire? Greece. Falling to Greece. And in, in, under this reign of this Grecian empire that splits into four parts, what happens to the Jewish people at this time? Okay. Yeah. So that a lot of changes in, in terms of you, you have some who become super strict, you have some who become super politicized, and there was, a, there was a revolt because they were being persecuted, right? Who was the, uh, who, who was the Antiochus that we kept talking about that was causing lots of problems? All right, that's right, Epiphanes, Antiochus Epiphanes. And so the Jews revolt. And what is that revolt called? Maccabean. The Maccabean Revolt. Okay, see, it's so good to know all this stuff. And um, they regain independence and all of that. But it, it ultimately, uh, that wasn't God's plan for them to just fight in war. He had a much grander and greater plan. Jack? One constant throughout that is they didn't have idolatry. Very good. That they did not have physical idols that they worshipped since the days of the captivity. Uh, in, in general. Very good. Very good. And then um, Greece fell to what empire? Rome. Fell to Rome. And then, then in the fullness of the times, God sent forth His Son, born of woman, born under the law, that He might redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons. Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5. So that's obviously the next period, which is the life of Christ. I, I mean, everything's been pointing to this moment. Since Genesis 3.15, all those genealogies, all that stuff has been pointing us to this man, Jesus. It's pretty incredible. He was born of a virgin. As was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 7, he performed miracles that could not be denied, that proved that he was who he, he didn't just claim to be the son of God, he proved it. In these undeniable miracles, even his enemies could not deny the miracles. Uh, he reached out to people nobody else would reach out to. He patiently and lovingly taught and guided his disciples, his apostles. He proved his enemies wrong with argumentation that could not be refuted. Just silenced his enemies. And he showed us the glory of, of the Father. Uh, he was the fulfillment of all of the prophecies. So we talked about Genesis 3.15. So here's that seed of woman. In fact, he was the seed of woman in a unique way, wasn't he? Because he had no earthly father. And uh, he dealt a crushing blow to Satan's head on the cross. He is the seed of Abraham. The one seed of Abraham through whom all the world is blessed. How is all the world blessed through Jesus? Salvation. Salvation. 
the offer of salvation. He is the descendant of David, who is ruling on the throne of David now forever. That throne of David not being some physical earthly throne, like premillennialism would purport. But where is that throne? It's, it's in heaven. He is reigning, and He will reign forevermore. So that's, that's the crux. That's where everything's leading. And that's what we're going to be studying for six months. Aren't you all excited about that? I mean, I feel like we're all kind of ready for that. Like, this Old Testament has been great, but boy, it's a lot. It's a lot. And we're just ready to just, let's just study about Jesus for a little while. Six months, we're going to get to do that. And uh, we're, re we're really excited about that. Okay, so after the life of Christ, what is the next period? The early church. And I wish that this meant that the disciples were early to church so that I could preach, you have to be early to church. <laughs> the Bible says so, but it doesn't, so I can't. What does the term early church mean? Yes. So when the church first started, the reason we call it early church and not just church, period, is because we're still in the church age, the messianic age today. So this is still... Now I want you to stop and think about it. God's plan is not over. It's still going. We're still part of that plan today. Okay? But so this is the early church. Um, what kind of stories come to your mind? And in, in, this is the book of Acts, by the way. What kind of stories come to your mind from that period? Okay, the first sermon in Acts chapter 2. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. Okay, Peter being imprisoned by the angel. No, freed for prison. No, not imprisoned by the angel. <laughs> Released by the angel. Thank you, John. Sir? Stoning of Stephen. Stoning of Stephen, Acts chapter 7. Right. Okay, Acts chapter 5. Ananias and Sapphira. And their, their death they lied to the Holy Spirit. Conversion of Paul. Conversion of Paul, Acts chapter 9. And Acts chapter 22, is re the, he tells that uh, in 26. The servants, the deacons, the seven men. They, they use the word deaconess there. Yes. I mean, not deaconess, deacon. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Acts, Acts chapter 6. Good. What else? Stoning of Stephen. Ma'am? The stoning of Stephen. Yes, ma'am. Stoning of Stephen. Saul's consenting to the death of Stephen. Watched everybody's clothes. Right. And then the church, Acts 8 and verse 4, the church is scattered, and everywhere they went, what did they do? Preach. They preached the word. So let me just kind of put up here. So we've got the, the baptism of 3,000 souls in Acts chapter 2, and the church is growing and growing. By Acts chapter 5, there's like 5,000 men, plus however many women and children. Uh, in chapter 11, they're called Christians for the first time. Good. In Antioch. And so after the stoning of Stephen, the church spreads. And the persecution is like pouring gasoline on a fire. It causes the church to not stop, but, but to grow larger and more powerful and more influential. And it didn't stop them uh, from preaching uh, the word. We have, starting in Acts 13, who is the main focus? Paul. In his missionary journeys, um, and he takes the gospel to the whole known world. Colossians 1 and verse 23 tells us that the Great Commission was finished by, by that point where, where Paul wrote that. It took about 30 years for the Great Commission to be fulfilled. Of course, it's still an ongoing commandment. Um, but that commandment was specifically given to the apostles. Okay, so that's the early church. And what is the next and last period of Bible history? Bible letters. All right, letters to the Christians. Now, Technically, Acts was a letter, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were letters. But the way we're dividing this up, the life of Christ is the four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The period of the early church was one book, the book of Acts. And letters to the Christians is the rest of the New Testament, Romans through Revelation. What, who are some of the authors of New Testament books in this period? Paul? Paul? James, Peter, John, Jude. I believe we got them all. Did I miss any? 
man. And those were written by Paul to Timothy and to Titus. But yeah, you're right. Those are two New Testament books. Yeah, that's one of the, the confusing things. Um, and here's kind of the, the things that helped me with that. Um, in the New Testament, if a New Testament book is named after an individual, it is written to that individual if Paul was writing it. In all the other places, it was written by the individual. Does that make sense? So, uh, First and Second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, the, the books that Paul wrote to individuals are, are named after the individuals he wrote them to. But when you have First and Second Peter, First and Second, uh, Third John, Jude, those are written and named after the person who wrote them. So that's that's something that can help. And that's it. That that's that's the Bible. Pretty simple. The B-I-B-L-E, basic information before leaving earth. <laughs> Have you ever heard that? That's the B-I-B-L-E. We, we all need this basic information before leaving earth. We only have a few minutes. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this, but what I had in mind was I, I wanted to see if you all could, uh, if, if we could have 17 different answers here, 17 different people Summarize each one of the periods. So like one person tell me what before the flood is in your own words. One person tell me what the flood was in your own words. Just you got to keep it to like one sentence or two. You really super, super simple. And let's see if we can go through this, hopefully with 17 different people. So who wants to jump in? Just real simple. Tell me in your words what before the flood is about. All right, Jeff. Uh, creation and uh, uh, first sin. Uh, and, uh, the symbol, symbol. Perfect. Right. But the flood. Somebody sum that one up. Wet. <laughs> Wet? <laughs> now, is that you? Oh. <laughs> Mr. Bobby. All right. I said simple. Wet. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take that because we got to hurry. Uh, scattering other people. Somebody sum that one up. Power of Babel. Tower of Babel. Any, any other details you want to add there? God's view of, of arrogant people. God's view of arrogant people. All right. <coughs> Patriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Think of three men and three promises. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and what three promises? Land, Land nation, and seed. Savior or seed. All right. Next period. <coughs> the Exodus. Sir? Escaping Egypt. Escaping Egypt. Promised land. That sums it up. Going to the promised land, heading towards the promised land. All right, next period is wandering in the wilderness. Sum it up. 40 years. 40 years living in the wilderness. Man? The, the 12 spies. Yeah, that comes right at the end of the wandering. All right? Invasion and conquest. Joshua. Joshua. Anything else you want to say on that? Inheriting the promised land. Inheriting the promised land. Uh, the period of the judges. Apostasy. Apostasy in that cycle. Apostasy and deliverance. <clears throat> Sir? Apostasy and deliverance. Apostasy and deliverance. The judges were deliverers. Okay, great. Uh, United Kingdom. Real quick. We're running out of time. Saul, David, Saul, Solomon. Saul, David, Solomon. Divided kingdom. Name all the kings. <laughs> Can't do it. That's all right. Israel and Judah. Which one's more wicked? Israel. Israel. All right. Judah alone. The sin continues. And they're taken too. Captivity. All right. Babylonian captivity, 70 years. Return from captivity. Rebuilding of the temple. Learning the Rebuilding law. the walls of Jerusalem. Rebuilding the law. Learning the law. Good. Under Ezra. All right. Years of silence. Four hundred years. Four hundred years. Maccabean revolt. All right. Life of Christ. <coughs> kind of hard to sum that one up, isn't it? Salvation. Salvation in one word. Amen. Early church. Development. Ma'am? Development. Development. Pentecost. Good. Pentecost. Pentecost. 
and, and the aftermath. There you go. And letters to the Christians. Things to learn. Instruction. 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 I was about to say, what are some destruction talking about? Uh, instruction. Okay. Uh, Romans through Revelation. So hopefully that gave you a better bird's eye view of all of these. And so please do your homework um, that I handed out to you for, and it's called linking the 17 periods. So do all of that and uh, please come back on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to that. All right.